Tarzan and the Diamond of our share. In the forbidden city of Asher, Wolf is killed by a prehistoric ape guarding the father of diamonds. Magra is spirited away to King Suten's quarters where she finds Helen Gregory. Both young women are taken by the king and his favorite, Hakeru, to the chamber of Brian Gregory, who is held in a helpless state of suspended animation. King Suten informs Helen that she is to become queen in place of Tira, and he offers Magra to Hakeru. When Tarzan and Darno leave their quarters under guard for a conference with Tira, Tom and Larson decide to follow them. In the great ceremonial hall, Tom's greed leads him to make a second attempt to remove the diamond. With the huge golden disc half out of the white marble casket, Larson suddenly looks up. His eyes become fixed, staring, his face white with fear. He stands spellbound with a cold, stark horror. High above him in the dim, vaulted ceiling of the temple of Mahachu hangs the gruesome, hideous, flaming mask of death! <laughs> It, it been talking to us, Tom. Uh, this childish trickery does not impress me, nor does it frighten me. Praise him. He upon whom the flaming face looketh shall pass into everlasting death before the pool of the moon. Oh, oh, did you hear what it said? It... It must have understood you. All right, Larson. Control yourself. The thing is retreating now, you see. It is fading, melting into the shadows. It is gone. Oh, thank the Lord for that. I tell you, Tom, it, it talked in. Yes, a more surprising thing, a rather strange performance. You call it performance, eh? Well, next time you can have my seat. It is a trick, Larson. It must be a matter of elementary levitation, which probably means nothing to you, so forget it. If I only could. You remember how Wolf saw it when we first came into the temple? How oh, he was hypnotized by it. And what happened to him? I feel just the same like him now. It don't mean no good for me, Tom, or, or you. A man of your jungle experience, Larsen, should discredit such trickery. It is based on superstition. You have seen enough of that among the natives. However, when my mind is once made up, nothing can change it. I am going to get that diamond now. My goodness, man, you've been crazy. No, sir, not for this feed. They have got enough. Yeah, but it is worth millions, last. Yeah, sure. And what good will that do me if he ain't been alive to spend it? No, I think I go now. I don't want to see that face again. And I don't like that pit full of apes. Have I not told you that Tarzan killed that monster? If there are others, well, we must chance that. Yeah, sure. Then you go ahead and get it. It's been easy now. We had it halfway out already. Hey, watch you. You are a child, Larson. The riches of this world come only to him who is bold enough to take them. This gem will purchase an empire. Here, come and help me, quickly. It will be... Oh. What been that? A funny talking? Another one of those eight brutes come, Larson. Quick, run! 
Meanwhile, Tarzan and Darno have followed the two silent, white-clad Hesseherian guards down a long, dimly lit passage. They halt before a pair of richly embossed bronze doors. Did you see which stone the guard pressed, Tarzan? Yes. Careful now. Let the queen do the talking until we know what she wants. As the bronze doors swing wide, the ape man and Darno see before them a spacious apartment furnished in true barbaric magnificence. The little blue-flamed wall lamps are legion in number and flood the room with a soft brilliance. At the far end of the chamber is a grotesquely carved bench of black marble covered with soft skins and furs. Tira, daughter of the sun and queen of the hesse hair, reclines among the furs. Her throat, arms, and ankles are covered with jewel-bedecked ornaments of beaten gold. A cold smile mantles her haughty face as she watches Tarzan and Dano approach. Come ye two from the outer world. Stand before me, Tira, daughter of the sun and queen of the hesse hair. Stop. And why, Tarzan the Apes, hast thou brought this man with thee? He is my friend. Whatever you have to say to me, speak frankly. As ye wish. But I warn ye, if either thou or thy friend, Tarzan the Apes, think to trick me, it were better that thou hadst never been born. Your threats are meaningless, Tira. Why did you send for me? Thy words are blunt, direct. Good. I shall speak in like manner. Thou canst serve me. How? What do you want me to do? After the guardian ape killed the wolf, he turned on thee. How do you know that? <laughs> My spies are everywhere, Tarzan of the apes. Remember that. They told me that thou didst fight and kill a great talking ape. Never before had such a thing been done. I wouldn't have harmed the strange Mangani if he had not charged Darno. Thou hast done what no one else could do. And this is my wish, that thou shalt start even again. Tarzan never kills wantonly, O daughter of the sun, only in self-defense. Then this time he will kill not alone to defend himself, but in defense of all the strangers who are with him. What's that? Aye, and if thou and thy friends remain in a share, thy days of life be numbered. Thou wouldst leave this city? Well? Then bring me the father of diamonds. I am not interested in the diamond. Thou art mistaken, Tarzan of the Apes. Thou hast great interest in the gem. Artef Suten and his council of thirteen possess it now. And they are all powerful. I can do naught for thee. But the talisman in my possession, I shall become ruler here. If we, you are saying, O Tira, that you wish this jewel merely so that you may set us free? Nay, Paul Darno, that is but a small matter. Suten is an evil man, a harsh ruler, a tyrant. Diamond is mine. A new day of freedom and happiness will dawn for the children of Hesseharia. Ah, uh, we, oui, I understand. As soon as the stone is brought to me, I shall set thee and thine beyond the walls of Tuen Baka, free to go where ye will. Dost thou agree, O Tarzan? Before I consider your proposition... You must tell me definitely. Is Helen Gregory in our share? Is her brother here? The Artef Suten doth many things, Tarzan of the Apes, of which I know not. If thou place the gem in my hands, I will know. I will know all. Ask about Margaret, Tarzan. Yes. Have these spies of yours told you that Ogre, <coughs> the woman who was with us when we stood before you in the ceremonial hall, has also vanished? The black-eyed maid? She has... Disappeared. Yes. They took her from our quarters when I was not there. Where is she? If I get the diamond, she goes free also. So, so Ten hath taken this maid. Bring me the father of diamonds and I shall let you all go. Be careful, Tarzan. I do not trust her. Don't worry. I know what I'm doing. It's a bargain, Tira. I'll bring you the diamond in return for which you will release my friend. Thou dost not speak for thyself, Tarzan of the Apes? I'm not worried about myself. If it were not for those who are with me, I should have been free long ago. Brave words, O Tarzan. And since thy killing of the guardian ape, I can almost believe thee. But have I your word, Tira, that you will keep your part of the bargain? Once Tira's word is given, however, bring me the father of diamonds and you shall see. Go now. I await thy return with the talisman. <laughs> Ah! 
back in the great ceremonial hall, the fierce guttural jabbering of the guardian apes sends Tome and Larson running at top speed into the first corridor they find. Are they following us, Tome? No. We are safe, I hope. I told you not to monkey with that diamond again. I don't know which brain was. The fiery mask or or those yelling apes. We are out of it for the time being. But I am going to have that gem... Stop. Listen. Someone been coming and they got no gun? No place to hide. Last night we have to fight here, back against the wall. We shall do the best we can. Maitre Zan, I tell you that woman cannot be trusted. Hey, Lieutenant Tarzan, why have we been looking for you? Oh, but Larson, eh? What are you two doing here? We followed you, thinking you might need us. Have you seen Tira? Yes, and accepted her proposition. Ah, so she did make you a proposition. If I bring her the diamond, you'll set us all free. By Jiminy, that been good news. But wait, Larson. She does not know anything about Elaine or Magra, at least, so she says. But I am convinced that she is lying. She does not know where Magra is. Magra's capture or abduction seems to have been a surprise to her. But don't worry. We won't leave without Magra or Helen if she is here. You two should not have left our quarters. We've had enough disappearances. My fault, Tarzan. I made one more attempt to get the diamond. Yeah, sure. And that same face of fire came down from the ceiling and told us... That we would be dead before the next full moon. A clever piece of levitation, Darno. Well done, I admit, but nothing to fear. When it disappeared, I tried once more to lift the golden disc from the casket when one of the apes... Yeah, came. one of those talking apes began yabbering, an ape began running. <laughs> and I believe I led the race from the chamber. <laughs> well, uh, and here we are. We're going back there and get that diamond. And we'll all go to Tira with it. Maybe you, Ben, go on, but not this feed. One strange plant. Do not be foolish, Lawson. I will face an hundred wild apes with Tarzan. Come on, we're wasting time. As the four men approach the center vast ceremonial hall, Tarzan motions the others to remain in the shadow of one of the great stone columns. Then, noiseless as a stalking leopard, he draws near the white marble casket. He raises the heavy carved lid leans over to lift out the great golden disc. As he does so, not one but two of the great prehistoric kids of primates, jabbering wildly, leap from the pit and charge straight for Tarzan. 